Hello everybody, my name is Cyril, welcome back. Today we are going to be making artisan style French bread. <laughs> so well with everything that you'll make for dinner um, and it's something that you can't get if you buy from the store because it's never gonna be the same and some people are intimidated by making bread but I promise you this recipe is so easy anybody can do it there's no kneading really required and the ingredients you can find wherever it's you've got four basic ingredients flour water yeast and salt and that's all you need so I'll show you exactly what you're gonna need as far as equipment goes, you'll need a big mixing bowl, preferably a glass one or a wooden one. Then you're gonna need a liquid measuring cup or anything to really hold water because we're gonna be using a scale. Um, a kitchen scale is going to ensure that, especially when baking, you've got the exact measurements you need for any recipe baking is a little bit trickier because it is a chemical reaction that is happening so if you've got the right ingredients you're always going to have um, excuse me if you have the right amount you're always going to have the best results so and then another bowl for your flour and then some salt and active dry yeast something to mix with and then a bench scraper i have it's just easier to maneuver the dough whenever it is time to shape and bake the dough you will also be baking this bread in a Dutch oven. So this is a Dutch oven. A Dutch oven is going to mimic almost like a professional commercial grade bread oven because you can't get the exact results in just a regular oven that you might have at home. But a Dutch oven allows you to lock in that moisture, keep the humidity high, which allows you to have a great rise in your bread and a really crunchy, thick crust. If you do not have a Dutch oven, First off, I recommend that everyone has a Dutch oven because you can use this for braising things in the oven, for making a stew on the stove top, you can use it over fires, you can, you can do a lot of things with this, so it's great to have. But if you don't have one, you can still make this bread on like a flat like baking sheet or even put it in like a surround cake pan. It will still bake and it will still taste great, but you won't get the same crumb that you would in a Dutch oven you won't get the same rise and you won't get the same crust. It'll still be great, but if you want artisan style quality, then you need a Dutch oven. So, let us get started. First thing you're gonna do is measure out your flour. So, I make a pretty large loaf that's gonna fit in my six quart Dutch oven. So I'm gonna make it a little over with 600 grams of flour and then 480 milliliters of warm water. Now, the way I got those measurements is to 80 to 85% hydration dough is what you're gonna need, which you work with percentages when you're making dough. So I'm gonna be making with 600 grams of bread flour. You can make it with all purpose, but it will not be the same crumb, it will not be the same chewiness, and you will not get the same exact result. Still will be good, but if you're wanting quality and the bread that I'm going to show you that you saw in the beginning of this video, you're going to need bread flour. So turn on your scale, make sure you zero it out with whatever's on there and make sure it's in grams. So we're going to need 600 grams. This looks a little short. And as I mentioned before, you do want to be pretty precise with measuring your ingredients, at least the water and the flour. So we've got our flour set aside, and now we're going to set our scale to milliliters, and we're gonna measure 480 milliliters of warm water. Awesome. Now you're gonna pour your 480 milliliters of water into your bowl, and then you are going to add, set that aside, then you're gonna add your yeast. Active dry yeast is going to be the better um, yeast for this, not instant yeast, because it does tend to rise a bit quicker and the longer you have a rise with any sort of dough, the more flavor it's going to have. 
the more it ferments and it produces a more intense depth of flavor that you'll find in bakeries. So you'll need seven grams, depending on how long you want it to rise. This is about four hours, five, four to six hour rise, I'm gonna use seven grams of yeast. If you want it to be overnight, you can put only a couple grams of yeast and put it in the fridge and let it ferment all night and then just let it warm up before you bake it and shape it that you'll see later in the video. Um, but since I'm gonna be making this today, seven grams of yeast should be great. One packet is seven grams already, but if you do not have the packets, have it like I do, then you're going to measure, it's about one and a half teaspoons. Once that is added, you wanna dissolve it in the water, just quickly, just so you can test that that yeast is actually alive and active. You should see bubbles, I bake quite often, so I've used this yeast and I know that it is alive. So you can see I've just dissolved the yeast in there. Next, you're gonna add your flour, all of your flour, all at once. Once you've added your flour, you add your salt as well. Um, you don't wanna add the salt right into the water because it can inhibit the yeast from properly blooming. But once the flour's in, you can just go ahead and add the salt right on top of the flour. So salt for flavor for good flavor you're going to want two percent of the total weight of the dough so i've got about a thousand and eighty grams of um, weight here plus or minus some because of the yeast so that ends up being about 20 grams of salt so that's going to be a tablespoon and i'm using this is important diamond crystal kosher salt is a little less salty than other salts, other kosher salts. So I'm gonna use a full tablespoon and then another teaspoon. If you're using regular iodized Morton salt, I would go with like a teaspoon and a half, maybe two teaspoons, but no more. Once that's added, go ahead and mix that in well. All right, so the reason I wanted to bring you up close is so you can see exactly how sticky and shaggy this dough looks. This looks nothing like bread dough where you might see in videos that are super soft and supple and have lots of bubbles when you're shaping it, but I promise it'll get there. This is what it looks like before it's fermented and it is very sticky, which is how it should be. So you're gonna clean off your spoon, make sure all the dough is in the bowl. And then at this point, we are going to cover this dough and you will set it in a warm place for a total of about four to six hours. Periodically, every 30 minutes to 60 minutes, we are going to turn the dough. If you've ever seen sourdough being made or seen any videos, it's essentially just moving the dough around lightly and gently. That way all the yeast can um, have enough food with the flour and react well so that it proofs even more evenly and it will actually stretch that gluten that's being made and it'll trap more air so it'll have a better rise and a better end product. So I'll show you what that looks like here in about 30 minutes. All right, so it's been about 30 minutes here. And like I said, we need to turn the dough and that allows for the gluten to form better and that it'll trap more of the air as the yeast is working and proofing. So that you have a better rise and a better um, texture on the dough whenever it is ready to bake or when it's done. So you get a little bit of oil on your hands. I've got a little bit of olive oil here. And just get that on your fingers because this dough, as we saw, is very sticky. And I don't know if you can see from there, but it already has risen a little bit and it's a little bit more smooth, but still nowhere near where we need it to be. And doing this, these turns is actually gonna help it become smoother um, and more uniform. So what you're gonna do is stick your hands underneath the dough and slowly lift it up and stretch it. You can see it's very stretchy. And then you're gonna turn the bowl quarter, quarter of the way and then do it again. And just fold it over itself. Quarter turn, grab the dough and turn it over itself. And then last one, give it a good stretch and turn it over itself. And that is literally it. We're gonna do that every 30 minutes, every hour, um, 
the more you do it, the more gluten will develop and the more air will trap. So if you're at home and you're not doing anything, every 30 minutes, give it a turn. Um, if not, every hour works as well. Cover your dough back up and then place it back in that warm spot. And then I will see you guys once the dough has proved. You'll see how much it smooths out. And then we'll be ready to shape it and pop it in the oven. All right, so we're at the final stretch of proofing. You can see that the dough has risen quite a bit. It's much more smooth. It's got air bubbles coming to the top. So it's about ready, but you need to have your oven preheated. So you need to set it to the highest setting. Mine goes to about 500, 550, and you're going to preheat the Dutch oven with it. This ensures that when you put the dough into the oven, it's going to be as hot as possible and it can start rising immediately. So. I just heated up the main part of the oven or the Dutch oven and I left the lid out. You can heat up the hit lid if you want, but I feel that um, if you leave the lid off, it's easier and faster to get the dough into the Dutch oven and then back, um, get the Dutch oven back into the oven so you can start baking right away. But while we're waiting for that to heat up completely, you've still got your dough here and make sure that's um, still covered at this point. You're gonna get a square piece of parchment paper cut up. This is what you're gonna place your dough on when you are putting it into the Dutch oven so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the actual pot. And then I've got some bench flour here as well. This is going to be on your work surface so the dough isn't completely sticking to the counter and that way you can easily shape it and maneuver it to get it into the um, Dutch oven. So I'll see you guys back here once that oven is ready and we'll shape the dough. Okay, our oven is about ready. I'm just gonna quickly get it started with the shaping. So I'll take the dough out and then as I'm shaping it, I'll bring you guys closer. That way you can see exactly what my hands are doing. You're going to first lightly flour your work surface. While you're at it, just lightly flour the parchment and then pour out your dough. You can see that it is extremely sticky still. It's got all that webbing, which is the gluten strands that have formed from all the turning we did. Captured the air and this, you kind of want to let it fall out and not force it out. That way the air still is, as much of it is still trapped inside there. You're not really pushing any out. You can see I'm just getting the little strings detached here, but I'm not punching the dough, I'm not squishing it. All right, so the dough's on the counter. Now you're going to zip up the dough, almost like stitching it. You're gonna bring the outside corners, edges in to the center and working kind of quickly because it's so sticky, it absorbs all of your bench flour but then you're going to like pinch it all together at the top. And this is tightening up the dough, that way the gluten strands are tighter and it can rise up rather than spread out. So once that's stitched together nicely, you're gonna grab your bench scraper and flip it over. So the seam side is down. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more flour around the dough. And this is where the shaping process is. You're gonna form your hands almost like a U, upside down U, and you're going to drag the dough across the surface, the counter. This is doing the same thing as the stitching. It's pulling everything a little bit tighter and bringing it up onto itself. That way the gluten strands remain strong and the air stays trapped. You can see that I don't have too much flour. If you have too much flour on the work surface, then it won't drag across properly. It'll, it'll, or excuse me, it'll um, drag rather than stick and tighten up. But just a little bit of flour, that way it's not just tearing everywhere. Make sure your hands have a good amount of flour. And just turn it, quarter turn, make that U and then pull towards you. And you can see that the dough under itself is tightening up. So I'm making a circle shape just because my Dutch oven is a circle. You can make an oval. Like I said, if you don't have a Dutch oven, you can put it on a flat sheet making baguette style loaves. But this is what really gives the best result. 
So once you've got a good round and tight bowl, you're going to move it onto your parchment. So I'll move it on. Carefully lifting. And you can see that it's remaining tight because of how much we pulled it. It's not spreading out like it was before. And it still has the air bubbles trapped on there, which is exactly what we want to see. So our oven is preheated. We're going to go towards the oven. We're going to score the bread. I have a lam, which just means blade in French, but it is this tool. It's got a razor attached to it. It's used for scoring bread. If you do not have a lam, which most of you won't, you can just use a very sharp knife and make a quick, deep incision into the bread. So I'll do that here actually real quick and then we'll go over to the oven. So you'll grab the dough and give it a nice quick cut. All right, and let's head to the oven. All right, our oven is ready. So we're gonna get the Dutch oven out. Make sure you've got oven mitts or towels you can use to grab it because it will be very hot. Go ahead and close the oven to keep the heat in there. And moving quickly, you're gonna grab the parchment and place the dough in there, directly in the center. And kind of spread out the parchment, that way it doesn't inhibit the dough from rising. You know, anything that like covers the dough directly. But that's good. And then put on the lid, making sure it's completely covered. Another step you can do is spraying the dough before you place it in the oven. This just gives it a big um, head start as far as humidity goes. That way it'll rise a bit better and have a better crust. So get that back in the oven quickly and close the door. Now that lid is on for 25 minutes and then you're gonna take the lid off for another 40 to 45 minutes. Um, if you keep the lid on, it will actually rise, the bread will rise and hit the lid and it will stop it from rising even more and the metal touching the crust will not give it a darkening of the color of the crust. So 25 minutes covered and then 40 to 45 minutes uncovered depending on the heat of your oven. And we'll see what that looks like here in a little bit. All right, our bread is done baking. We're gonna get it out of the oven. You see, I took the lid off at the 25 minute mark and continued baking for another 40 minutes. And you can see just how nice and dark the crust got. Super hard and crunchy. So this is done, but you need to let it cool completely before you can cut it. So we're gonna take it off and put it onto a cooling rack and we'll come back once it is cooled and I'll show you what the inside looks like. As you can see, it's just truly a wonderful um, loaf of bread. It's got that springiness, that chewiness, you've got a crispy crust. You can hear that crunch. And you got the thick crust on the bottom. It's really a great recipe, really simple to make. Um, it does take a little bit of time, but if you organize your day in a, um, just mindful of baking the bread and the turns that you have to do, it really isn't a whole lot of work. But I hope you guys like that recipe and let me know if you try it. And 